so in previous video i talked about the lorentz transformation in fact i derived the lorentz transformation so in this video i'm i will explain the time dilation so a simpler explanation or description of time dilation is that the moving clock runs slow that if you have one clock and this clock is at rest and you measure the time interval between the between any two events so it will give you a value and now if the clock is moving and you measure the time interval in this clock of the same events so the time interval will be dilated so it means that the the clock when when the clock is in motion so the time interval is larger so time dilation phenomena is a consequence of einstein's second postulate and it is also a consequence of the lorentz transformation so i will derive this expression for the time dilation using the einstein postulate as well as using the lorentz transformation so assume we have this sort of setup here we have a box whose length is l naught and uh, we have two mirrors m1 and m2 so let's say that uh, there is an event that the light is emitted at this mirror m1 and then the light travels towards m2 and from m2 it is reflected back and it comes back to m1 so basically we have two events here the light is originated from m1 and light is detected at m1 so if the length of this box is l naught so for the complete round trip so the distance covered by the beam of light will be 2 l naught and using the einstein postulate we know the speed of light is c so therefore using the very simple relation s is equal to vt i can find the time interval between these two events and this time interval will be let's say if i call it delta t so this will be delta t is equal to the distance over velocity which is 2 l naught by c so now this is our time interval okay now assume that uh, this entire setup is moving with a constant velocity u with respect to an observer which is at rest at the origin of this s frame since this entire setup is moving so when the light is originated at this point m1 so we say the coordinate the x coordinate is x1 and when it is reflected from m2 so it does not uh, follow a, uh, a vertical path in x direction because so it does not follow a a vertical path because the entire setup is moving so uh, when the light is emitted at m1 and it it reaches m2 so there is a time interval and let's call this time interval t1 so this entire setup has moved a distance u t1 in that interval so therefore it will be detected at x1 plus u t1 and therefore when it is reflected from m2 and reaches m1 so it follow this path and therefore we have this this type of triangle so this 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 is how the light appears for an observer which is at rest so if we perform some simpler calculations so we see here that uh, we can use this triangle so uh, we, uh, we we know from the pythagoras theorem so the hypotenuse square is equal to base squared plus uh, perpendicular squared so the distance covered by light in time t1 is basically the hypotenuse so this distance the hypotenuse is c t1 because the light speed of light is c and time is t1 so the distance covered will be c t1 so we can have c squared t1 squared is equal to then we need to square the base so this will be u squared t1 squared plus the the perpendicular which is l naught so l naught squared so this gives me t1 square c squared minus u squared is equal to l naught square and from here i can find the value of t1 which is equal to l naught c squared minus u squared square root and similarly when the light is reflected from m2 and it is detected at m1 so we we have this triangle so a similar the calculation can be performed so it it will give us the same time interval because you see here so the distance covered 
will be C T two squared plus the vertical distance which is L naught squared plus U T two squared. So this gives me so the total time interval between these two events that is the the emission of light from M one and the detection of light at M one is equal to two times T one as you can call it T one plus T two. So this gives me two times L naught C squared minus U squared. So I can take this C squared common from the denominator. So this gives me C. So two L naught by C as it is, and then I can write one over one minus U squared by C squared here. And what is this two L naught by C? So this is basically the time interval in the frame in which this entire setup is at rest. So if I call that uh, time interval delta t, so I can put it here. So this gives me delta t prime is equal to delta t. So we get delta t prime is equal to delta t square root one minus u squared by c squared r is equal to gamma delta t, where gamma is equal to one over square root one minus u squared by c squared. Since this Factor is always greater than or equal to one, and therefore this delta t prime is greater than delta t. So this implies that the time interval for this observer has been dilated. And now we we can we can define some terms. So the so the frame in which the two events are happening at the same location. So we call the Time interval as proper time interval. So in this setup, the the emission of light and the detection of light is happening at the same x, y, z, and therefore the proper time interval will be delta t, and the improper time interval will be at which the both of the events are happening at different locations. So you see here the emission of light happens at x one, and the detection of light happens at x two. So therefore, this will be improper time interval. So that is the relation between improper time interval and proper time interval. So you should remember that the proper time interval is the shortest possible time. So here is. A simple problem which we which discussed in our first video is the when the pions are created at rest, so they have a lifetime of 26 nanosecond. But when they are created at a speed uh, with 0.913 speed of light, so they have a speed 60. Uh, so they have a time interval or the lifetime 63.7 nanosecond. So you see, uh, so now this. Formula can explain that effect. We can use the Lorentz transformation to explain the time dilation effect. Okay, now uh, we have two events: light is emitted from M1 and light is detected back at M2. So, so in a frame in which this uh, this setup is at rest. So the both of both the events are happening at the same location. So therefore, x, y, z are same. So for first event, I can write x, y, z, t1, and for second, I can write x, y, z, t2. So here, the unprimed system is representing the frame at which the entire setup is at rest. And for some other uh, frame in which this setup is moving, so I can write the coordinate at x1 prime, y1 prime, z1 prime, and t1 prime. And similarly for the second event, x2 prime, y2 prime, z2 prime, and t2 prime. So now these are our transformation equation. And you know basically what is time interval? So in S frame it is t2 minus t1, and in S prime frame it is t2 prime minus t1 prime. So now this is our time transformation equation, or the Lorentz transformation equation. So if you have a frame S prime in which in which is moving, so we can write this. So t prime is equal to t minus x v by c squared one minus v squared by c squared. So I can use this transformation equation here. So my t t one prime will be t one, the corresponding time in the S coordinate system. T1 minus the corresponding x coordinate, but you look here, both of the events are happening at the same x coordinate. So therefore, I can write x v by c squared 
divided by this factor and similarly t2 prime will be equal to t2 minus xv by c squared divided by this factor so the time interval between these two events in s prime frame will be delta t prime is equal to t2 prime minus t1 prime so i can subtract these two equations so this gives me t2 minus xv by c squared minus t1 plus xv by c squared since the x coordinates are same so it will cancel out and we will left with t2 minus t1 which is basically delta t so delta t divided by 1 minus u squared by c squared under the root so you see the same expression can be obtained only using the transformation equation so we don't need to worry about the geometrical figures or the diagrams so so it is more abstract and more general so we can obtain the same time dilation equation so time dilation is basically a consequence of einstein's second postulate as well as a consequence of lorentz transformation so that is all for this video so in the next video i will talk about the relativity of simultaneous